Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to Tim's Turbos. I wanted to do a crash course on buying a used turbocharger. So I'm going to start from the compressor end all the way to the turbine end on things you could look for to see if you want to decide if you actually want to buy it or not. First test, simplest test, pick up the turbocharger, shake it. If you have a shake problem, you see the wheels flopping around in there, in the turbine and compressor wheel don't rotate in the same time. The best thing to do to this turbocharger is put it in a nice box and throw it in the trash. The next step is compressor wheel inspection. If you have any type of bearing failure, you're gonna have a compressor wheel failure most of the time too. If you look here, you can see the blades actually roll upward. This is from the wheel going back and forth contacting the housing. This can also be a soft damage issue. If you pulled in like a shop rag or a silicone coupler from your intercooler, it'll also roll those blades back and not snap them off. But usually you're gonna have some shiny marks here like a polishing. The best way to fix this one, if it's got a lot of in-out play and a lot of shaft play and you're probably gonna have some bearing damage, throw it away too. Now there are some other pieces you can fix on compressor wheels. This is a regular HX35 wheel. It's probably hard to see in the picture, but you can kind of listen. It has a bunch of grooves and chips on the front of the face. You can reface these and clean them up. Compressor wheels aren't too expensive depending on which one you get. But another thing you want to look for, it's on the very edges. You should feel a smooth edge with your thumbnail coming off this corner here. If you feel any type of click on it, that means the wheel's been contacting the housing. Best thing to do with that, throw it away. So next off, I was going to show you what in and out play does on a turbocharger. Now most bearing designs and stuff can withstand some side to side play from left to right or up and down. But when you have in and out play, if you look at the piston ring right here, which is stationary, the piston ring doesn't move, but the shaft comes in and out, and that cuts the groove on the shaft so that usually you're going to start developing oil failure. It's going to go past the edges, and the compression wheel is just as bad. And on the turbine and compressor side, on the inducer of the turbine, you're going to see wear, and back behind the seal plate, you'll see contact in there. On the compressor side, you're going to see damage right on the bottom of the x deucer because the wheel is going towards the compressor cover. It's not all you can do to repair that. Best off getting new parts. But externally, visually, you can't see in and out thrust damage because everything's underneath the surfaces. So you really want to be careful with that. Another thing, there are no two-piece turbine shafts and heads. If this happens, something snapped off the fusion weld, the only thing you do with that, throw them in the trash or go to a scrap metal dealer and get some money for the Inconel. When you snap off a turbine head, it may not look that bad, but this contour has been all chewed up right here. And so when the wheel bounces in there and snaps the head, eventually it'll actually blow through and end up your catalytic converter if you're running one. And this turbine housing is pretty much worthless. Externally, the bore looks about the same, but when you go to the inside, that radius is so far out, you can have a quarter inch gap between the blades and the turbine wheel. So that turbine housing is pretty much trash. Another thing to look at is surge problems. This wheel could have failed from two different things, overboost causing surge. This one, the lock nut popped off, sucked back in. You can see little pock marks right on the inside of the bore. That's just the wheel bouncing back and forth, chewing everything up. If you're lucky, sometimes you can salvage this. Most of the time when the lock nut comes off though, all the thrust compartments don't have any load anymore, so all of them expand out. You start running into turbine wheel, hitting the housing and stuff like that. So you might be able to fix it with a cartridge as long as the housings are in still good condition. But you just have to take a closer look at it. Another issue is when you have side to side damage, you're going to see shiny marks on the turbine edges right where it hits the bore. 
Same as the compression wheel, you'll feel a tick right there with your fingernail. If you feel any tick, it's had some type of contact. Some people will say that the wheel isn't contacting the housing. That's just because the wheel has already worn off all the edges that actually touches the bore. Another set. <clears throat> Something you can't see when you have a turbo all assembled. This turbocharger failed from blowing piston rings. And so the rings fed into the turbine wheel itself. And you can see where it just buckles them over and shreds it. Sometimes you can fix these with just a turbine wheel. As long as you didn't bang the shaft up on the inside where it goes through the bore. So it's a toss up. But if you can take the turbine housing off a turbocharger before you buy it, do it. You can read a lot of information on this. I run in this a lot from high performance motors that run too lean. The most popular one is probably a 7.3 power stroke because the glow plug tips break off when they go through and you can't see the turbine wheel underneath until you take the turbine housing off. Here's a good example of a turbo that doesn't look too bad, but you have the in and out play. You can kind of see the blades rolled back in the contact there. This, if it just has a little bit of work, can be salvaged by a cartridge rebuild. Uh, you want to take a look in the bore to see if there's massive cracks. Most of the cracks you're going to see right on the wastegate ports here because the heat transfer is very radical. It goes up and down. If you see broken studs, figure about 20 to 50 bucks per stud on any turbocharger rebuild. And if it's stainless steel housing, it's even more of a headache. If you don't have a mill or some type of bolt eater to cut those out, you might as well buy a new turbine housing. Another thing to look at, so it might be hard to see, is map groove cuts. Right on the edge here, you can kind of see how there's a step that feeds in, disappears when you move the wheel to the side. That's where the map groove is, and so it had too much shaft play and bearing damage that it contacted everywhere else but the map groove. That wheel's toast. The turbo's completely rusted together. The wastegate's rusted. Best thing to do with this turbo in the trash and here's another thing that you may not think about when you have a turbocharger been on a car for a couple hundred thousand miles this shaft in the wastegate port it's opened a couple million times probably and it starts to get a uh, uneven bore wobble at it so that the cut in the bore there is actually oscillated and turned into an egg shape so a lot of times it's not a big dish big issue but if it closes all the way and then you still have a lift up on the wastegate port, then there's not much you can do with the housing except press the bushing out, weld in a new one, weld a new shaft on. You could probably be better off finding a new shaft. And last but not least, unseen damage. Just about every 911 turbo I build, I have to put a new turbine shaft in just because they erode away. Up here, there's a piston ring groove on the bottom and on an external groove. The external groove just gets rusty and carbon build up and it starts to cut away. When you put the double piston rings on there and try to pop it back into the bore, you're pretty lucky if you get it to pop back in. Most of the time they pop back off and slide over the shaft. So you're best off replacing the shaft on all that stuff. You can't see these damages until the turbo is completely disassembled. So one thing you have to look out for if you're buying a turbocharger that's used, make sure you don't see any signs of wear. You shouldn't see any shaft play, any in and out whatsoever. Very minimal side to side on, there's always going to be some, but just keep an eye on the different things and we can rebuild pretty much anything, but to try to keep the cost down, this is the best kind of route to go with instead of bringing it in and letting somebody check it out. I hope this video helps. Thanks a lot. Tim Sturbos.